In this section we're going to continue our day one studies and focus on the meaning of the passage. In our first part we looked at the observations in the text. Now the goal in part B of day one is to allow the language to both clarify and create more questions. That is, the goal of the study is to use your skills and original language resources to understand the vocabulary, word order, structural connections, uh, and provide a translation of keywords or the entire passage is you have time that permits. And one of the things you're looking at here is what new questions arise from your study of the language and what questions maybe from the first part of your passage does the study of the language answer. At the end of this study you're going to write a passage outline which presents an historically accurate account of the author's unfolding progression of thought. The passage outline ultimately answers the question what happened then? So before we begin though, you'll notice we're looking at our desktop. This was uh, the end of our part 1A of the study, but now we don't want to lose this information. We want to be able to come back to this and save this layout. So here's what you do. You go up to the top menu where it says layouts, and along the right side here you're going to see there's snapshots of what's taking place. Right here is the current desktop we have. So if I click the little pencil mark, I can type uh, new sermon layout. And this is really my day one layout, but I'm just giving it a name. Hit save, and then you can see along the left hand side it saved that. Now, of course, I already have all of my layouts saved for my homiletics day one, part A, B, and then day two, three, four, and five. So if I were going to save this work, uh, after I've been doing this study and I want to make sure I keep my desktop with uh, the current bookmarks and places and notes that are open so that I can go back to that, I would want to right click and then just simply hit update. And When I update that, that'll save my current desktop so I don't lose that layout. Alright, so that's saved. What I'm going to do just for the sake of convenience is I'm going to close all the Bible windows. Alright, I'm just going to leave these three up because I'm going to use these also in my day two. So we have our favorites, we have highlighting, and we have the information window. And those three are going to remain. So now, the next part of my day one part B layout is adding in the custom passage guide that I created to help with my study of the original languages. And as I mentioned in my introductory video, the Logos website already has some good teaching videos on creating custom passage guides and collections, but still I thought it might be helpful for me to show you how I created the custom passage guide for this day one layout. So here we have a look at what is behind the custom passage guide I created for my homiletics preparation day one to get at the meaning of the text. Now you're going to be creating this from scratch and how you would do that is you go up to the menu and you click on guides and you would create a new guide template. And when this opens, all these options on the left-hand side will show up, and on the right, it will be blank. And all you do to create something is simply grab it, drag it over to the other side, and that quickly adds a new section to your custom passage guide. Uh, then the only other key feature here is that uh, there are some options here, like for searching commentaries or creating collections, or if you've created your own custom collections, you can actually choose to search only those books or resources you want. So for example, in the compare versions section here, I've put together 15 uh, translations, anywhere from very literal to paraphrased, and put those so that I can compare those in this part of my study. In my commentary section, I've included today just my exegetical commentaries. I leave all my homiletical and expository commentaries for other days. And you can see that simply by clicking on this arrow, Logos then brings up a list of all my collections, and I can just go down and select the collection that I want to incorporate into this particular custom passage guide. In this case, of course, it's exegetical commentaries. can also do the same for creating a collection of my journals. Now the difference here is that commentaries are linked to the scripture text themselves. Uh, the collection in this case is going to search books that are not linked directly to the Bibles, that is versified, it's kind of the lowest word there, 
but it will pull up any journal articles that reference the Bible passage that I'm studying. I've also included in this section visualizations, grammars, which is also another custom collection of grammars, uh, both Greek and Hebrew, that will help in my study, and the apparatuses that are underlying the Greek and Hebrew text. Okay, so with this understanding, let's get back to finishing our Day 1 Part B layout. All right, so here we are back working on our layout for this part of our sermon preparation. And now we need to add in the custom passage guide we just created. So I'm going to go here to Guides, and we are going to add in the Homiletics Day 1 passage guide for meaning. Okay, and there's our guide. Now, watch what happens when we type in Galatians 1, 1 through 24, which is what we're working on for this part of the study and hit enter. Logos is then going to give us all the results. Now you notice that we already went through what's in this section here, but we have the literary typing, shows you the genre of style that each section of the passage you're reading is in. There's the compare versions that we just saw, and here's all the translations I selected and their comparison. As a side note, what's important here is that as you're doing this part of your preparation, if you don't have time to translate the entire passage, you know, verses 1 through 24 is going to be a lot, what you can use this version river for is a simple way to find quickly where maybe the most controversial or difficult passages are to translate. For example, in verse 2, you'll see that the version river is very close together. That means all these different translations are very similar. But here in verse 11, and here again in verse 19, and again towards the end in 22 and 23, we see a lot of diversity in how these translations interpret these particular verses. So what that tells me is if my time is limited and I can only spend a certain amount on my Greek translation, I may want to focus on where these translations are most diverse. And that's a good place to at least get started. Then you'll notice here are all the exegetical commentaries. The, again, these are just the exegetical ones in my library. And when I click on any one of these commentaries, they open up here to the right. And this then becomes the space where I'll work on for uh, reading through these exegetical commentaries. Below that is the journals, and I tend to focus this day only on the journals that will uh, expand or have some exegetical value. The next part is visualizations. And let me just show you quickly. These allow me, if I'm really going to find a section that I want to dig into and I want to look at the sentence and the structure, Logos has some great tools built in that I can do some analysis of the sentences. Uh, I put in some of my grammars here uh, in lexicons. These allow me to, again, just get some insight and dig into the substance of what's happening in each text. And the bottom is the apparatus. Now, I don't honestly go into this a lot, but I like having it available that if I ever did want to look at what manuscripts underlie each text, uh, where the differences are, or what's a more quote-unquote reliable text, uh, these are good resources that allow me to get that information very quickly. So I leave that at the bottom there uh, on the occasion that I might use it. Now the one piece that's missing from this is my notes. So uh, here's how we address those. You'll remember yesterday we added in uh, Bible studies and there's Galatians and there's my notes on Galatians. So I click that, it comes back in. I'm going to drag this to the bottom just below and share this space with the passage guide. And there are my questions that I asked the day before. Now today, I might want to add in some translation comments. So I will click here for Add a Note. And I'll just simply title this section Translation Notes. And here I can just keep a list of uh, observations. For example, I already said that in verse 2, and I think I said 22 through 24, for example, 
and those were some diversity in translations. Then as I get into my study, I may want to make notes here uh, on verse 4. I want to may, uh, redefine uh, a key word or show how it's translated differently or add some nuance to that word. So there's where I'll keep my translation notes. If I could, I would include here an entire translation of the passage. Barring that, again, it's just a w simple word study. Now that's one aspect. Now the other aspect that we're going to add in on this day is a feature in Logos called clippings. So let me go and add and show you what this is. Here if I go to File, right here is a section for clippings. Now I'm going to leave this above my notes for right now just so you can see the difference of what's happening here. As I read through my different exegetical commentaries, I may want to reread some of these sections later as a reminder. So I simply highlight that section and I can right click and just add that note to my clippings. And there you see all the text of what I just quoted it is right there. And if I have another text that I went through, uh, let me go back here and highlight this commentary and another text. I can again just simply add that to my clippings. So this becomes a great tool so I don't have to go back through my commentaries in a future time and look up notes. I can just simply get the quotes right in one place. So let me then title this clippings for homiletics day one and I'm gonna just title it Galatians 1. Keep it simple. And then I'm gonna take this tab and drag it into my Galatians favorites folder and now my notes and my clippings for Galatians are organized in one place. Let me just drag this down to share a spot with my notes and that will complete the layout for this day in getting the meaning out of the text. Uh, before we close, one last thing, remember go in and either save your layout uh, for this day or in my case, I want to come in for day one, part B meaning, and I'm going to update this. So the next time I open it up, it's right where I left off.